Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at an updated version of the Hidetsugu and Kairi combo deck, which kind of starts out as a Grixis mid-range deck. We've got a lot of great tools, of course Blood Tithe Harvester, we've got staples like Preacher, and then a Shieldred, of course, cannot go wrong with it. But then we're topping off our curve with Hidetsugu and Kairi, which has excellent synergy with Shieldred, as we'll get to draw three and then put two cards back on top, so we get to brainstorm essentially, and that can gain us a lot of life back with Shieldred in play. And then the goal is to put a push-pull on the top of our deck. This is a new split card from the latest expansion. Can either push at sorcery speed to destroy tanked creature, or we can pull for six mana, putting up to two target creature cards from a single graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. They gain haste, and we have to sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. Now, interestingly, these split cards have a combined mana value of eight. So if we reveal it on the top of our deck when Hidatsugu dies with its death trigger, we get to deal eight damage to the opponent, as well as cast push pull, selecting pull we reanimate Hidatsugu and Kairi, which will gain haste, and if turn we have to sacrifice it, we get to brainstorm again. If we have a second copy of push pull, we can and once again leave it on the top of our deck, and then because end of turn we have to sacrifice Hidatsugo and Kairi, we will end up uh, dealing another 8 damage to the opponent, so that's 16 damage, plus we also get to draw a few extra cards, and uh, that's kind of the combo finish that this deck is capable of. But of course we still have the flexibility of casting push as a 2 mana removal spell, so the older versions of this deck used to play Explosive Singularity, which can deal 10 to the opponent, and mana value 10 means 20 damage total to instant kill the opponent. This is not quite as explosive setting up those instant kills, but at least we have the flexibility of casting the removal spell so we can survive against aggro. And then rounding out the deck we've got a cut down as early removal paired with go for the throat for larger creatures, couple copies of make disappear to keep those combo decks and control decks honest, and then of course harvester we've got preacher, and then brotherhood's end also an important addition in the best of one meta at the moment with the red white convoke decks being everywhere, having a sweeper to deal three to each creature and each planeswalker is quite useful, on occasion can also destroy artifacts, and then trumpeting carnosaur is a nice one too in this deck, can discard it early to deal 3 damage, and then later we can also bring it back from the graveyard using push-pull, and then once again trigger its discover effect, so even though we have to sacrifice the Carnosaur itself after attacking for 7, we still get to maybe keep something else on the battlefield. And then the mana base has lots of uh, dual lands for fixing, even two copies of Xander's Lounge, and then we also have one of each creature land that's actually worth the running. A Restless Vents can help sculpt our hand, and then we've got a Restless Reef can also maybe mill ourselves after we brainstormed and kept some bad cards on top, or just to fill the graveyard for push-pull in the first place. And then a, a mix of dual lands that enter untapped early and untapped later in the game, and then a couple channel lands for additional utility. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Can cut down on one if necessary, otherwise play vents. Facing a schooner, that one sadly dodges go for the throat and cut down, but we can deal with whatever creature tries to crew it. Deep cavern bats. We can cut down a response. Opponent still gets to look at our hand. And then next turn, Preacher could be a good blocker for Schooner. Survives an opposing cut down. And really just want to hit our land drops. Right now Preacher makes a token. Opponent takes it out. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna jam another one. And our opponent's got another go for the throat, so maybe Shieldred can survive. Speaking of Shieldred... So we are behind here, but an untapped plan goes a long way. Gonna have to go for the throats before we draw. Keep up our blue mana. Now Brotherhood's End can also destroy their schooner. 
but not before we take another hit. Cut down doesn't look all that great. And another cut down goes to the graveyard. Yeah, if they drew double cut down, we would have been in excellent shape. Now, I guess we could go for shieldreds. And hope their last card doesn't some more removal. Opponent draws, so they don't have an answer in hand. At least not an instant speed one. Preacher survives Brotherhood's end. And another shield with the draw. Yeah, interesting spot. I think we just deal with the schooner. Opponent can still attack with both creatures drawing a card, but at least we don't have to worry about the schooner anymore. And we've got other removal spells to deal with our creatures eventually. Could also keep a make disappear. Our opponent's gonna still attack with both. So we're kind of falling behind while trying to keep up mana, which is pretty rough. And some of the cheaper removal spells they can maybe pay for or make disappear. So, yeah, close call. Schooner down. And Dream Thief surveils. Keeps card on top. And they'll draw into it with a Preacher. Probably have to trade when we have two more shielders in hand. And a bat can try and take one of them, but not both. Hidatsugu is a good follow-up to shieldreds. Although right now it also blocks all their flyers. So their opponent does take Hidatsugu, makes sense. We are definitely losing the race to these flyers at the moment. But nothing uh, Brotherhood's End cannot fix. Opponent keeps Dream Thief back to maybe chump and draw. Cut down, okay, that answers the bat. Get back Hidatsugu, although won't be able to cast it yet. Yeah, I mean, we're fine with an attack. Opponent's gonna take it. Pass a turn. They have lethal on board. No, they don't. And a preacher. I guess I can basically tamp them out with make disappear. Don't really want to sacrifice shieldred. But then we get to resolve Hidatsugu, gain a bunch of life. I think that's worth it, just to make sure Hidatsugu resolves. Oh, and a push-pull, okay. So we can try and set up our combo here. Got two of them. Maybe keep one in hand. Put one back. Hide shieldreds. Now if we attack with shieldred, their opponent probably takes the trade. I guess they have to because otherwise they die to shieldred. So I'm just gonna pass. And then maybe we can trade Hidatsugu for Preacher. We'll see. And if Hidatsugu dies, our opponent does as well. Opponent reconsiders. Goes for it anyway. Yep, 
And we get to exile the top card, and that's 8 damage to the opponent's face. In addition to a nice free spell. Get back Hidatsugu. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we do need to draw a few more lanes here, but uh, with 26 in the deck on the draw, we should be able to get there. And for now, we've got cut down into go for the throats. Could also take a turn off to play Xander's Lounge. So we don't take as much damage off our pain land. Even though this warden's gonna hit us pretty hard. Okay, Thalia now. Means we can cut down Thalia. And then Preacher on 3, a good way to stabilize. Vanguard will need to cut down a response. Take 2. And another Warden so they can activate if they want to. Well, Brotherhood's End would be a great top deck. For now, play Preacher and hope they can't remove it easily. Brutal Cathar will do exactly that. Now for opponent attacks, we can push the Vanguard, still have go for the throat for Brutal Cathar. So I think that's the plan. And we can potentially set up an ambush here by killing Cathar at instant speed. Thalia is gonna prevent that from happening, but we'll still have our Preacher back. Next turn, play another one, and then Hidatsugu to hopefully find more answers. Since Warden will eventually take flight. Could be worth it to attack to get a life linker. And then we'll still have another preacher on defense. And Warden goes digging once again, keeps on top. And we get to untap, finding Shieldred. Okay. So I'm not opposed to playing Shieldred, both Preachers attack, and then next turn Hidatsugu with Shieldred in play will gain us more life. So even without our Sweeper, we still have some good tools against Go Wide Aggro. Now Warden does fly. And a Stormseeker, it is nighttime, so that's pretty scary. They can pump up their flyer. So that's now hitting for six. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to cast two spells with Thalia out to switch it back to daytime. Don't think our opponent can afford to tap all their creatures. So what's the plan here? If I play Hidatsugu, I gain six. So then Preacher both draws and makes a token, so that's pretty neat. Did find our Brotherhood's End. Preacher attacks. We actually end up gaining a life thanks to Shieldred. But now there will be an unknown card on the top of our deck, since we couldn't set it up with our Brainstorm. But we're back to 14 with a Flying Blocker. Slasher pumps Thalia. And an all-out attack. Alright, well we're definitely blocking with our tokens. Something like Igunjo is likely, but uh, I don't think we care too much. Can probably ignore Thalia. And block like so. And then gain an extra life somewhere. That looks good. 
Opponent does have an Aganjo, not too surprising. But uh, most of the opponent's creatures will still die. And should be able to attack back for lethal, especially now after revealing a Mig Disappear for another 2 damage. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and the uh, triple push-pull is a bit much. Yeah, we need more lands to be able to cast our spells here. This isn't great with all tap lands, but I'll try it. And then go for the throat, can go, just keep the creatures. That also double up as removal. Marsh first in case we draw a cut down. Right, we're up against a red-white, so Brotherhood's End is going to be effective. More of a burn deck, perhaps. At least Preacher survives our own 3 damage. If they attack, they're maybe planning to finish off Preacher with a burn spell. Would still be a 2 for 1 of sorts. I'll just take it. And then... Yeah, problem now is if we Brotherhood's End, we end up uh, losing the Preacher to a Burn spell. So we might just play Harvester and then use the Blood Token to hit our land drops. And then the 1-1 token lines up well on the Duelist. And then now I'll discard the Brotherhood's End. Right, Lightning Helix will gain them 6 life now. And get to untap. So, yeah, attack with both, I suppose. Wandering Emperor gonna exile Preacher, but we'll still get a token out of it. And then Brotherhood's End can clean up their Planeswalker as well if we want to. Although it can still do that next turn and for now get a Preacher going. Yeah, all the life gain from the opponent makes it difficult to draw with the Preacher. So they might be on a more controlling deck with Quintorius. Yeah, speak of the devil. Opponent discovers, finding an Urabrask's Forge. Brotherhood's End can destroy artifacts as well. But uh, looks pretty good to answer creatures instead. Okay, so we can Brotherhood's End, which will clean up everything, leaving a Preacher in play that can attack, make a token. Still have much to learn. And then maybe next turn deploy Shieldred. If we draw land, we could also Harvester, destroy artifacts. Hidatsugu, also looking decent. Alright, we'll attack with both. Could see another Wandering Emperor. Which I'm fine with, since we don't want them exiling Hidatsugu. Yep. And shield wrote it is. Razor gets to discover and hits a wedding announcement. Land is tapped, so we don't need to worry about Lightning Helix finishing off Shieldred. And our opponent cashes in Emperor for another token. So Brotherhood's End is looking good, but Hidatsugu might still be the play. And then no attacks. Gain some life back. Keep Brotherhood's End on top for now.
And a Sunfall gonna exile everything, that's painful. So you don't trigger Hidatsugu. Well, at least now destroying artifacts also deals with a large incubator. Play Harvester. And then I'll play the land since we can discard Dark Slick Shores to the Blood Token next turn. Opponent's got the Helix. They still have two cards in hand, so... Does not get in with the creature land, so they have other plans. Maybe another Emperor end of turn. I guess I should do this now in case I draw into a tapped creature land that we want to deploy. I guess there's also Field of Ruin, so that kind of uh, counteracts a potential creature land. And our opponent had a Fateful Absence as another card. So we don't gain any life, but now push pull. Sadly, without Hidatsugu in the graveyard to reanimate. There's another one. Still seems worth casting. And then Shield Roads Harvester versus Double Harvester. I guess Double Harvester leaves behind some blood tokens. And then we can just deal with our tokens instead of attacking. Since it's uh, kind of a losing proposition here. Opponent did have another Emperor. Well, this has been one very grindy game, but the red-white deck might come out on top. Did have some nice back and forth at least. Yeah, we needed something like a Carnosaur here to reanimate and kind of take over. As it stands, can use a blood token to discard and draw, or we can draw with a clue token. I guess we'll start with blood. Find Sakanuma. Doesn't do anything for me right now. If we pull, I guess we can just get back Harvester once again, deal with both Samurai. Sure. Although we're still facing Bivouac, which is only going to get bigger. Could also attack with Harvester on Wandering Emperor offer the trade, but then we're dead on board to the creatures. Boone's going to feel the Ruin, maybe a little preemptive. Or they wanted to thin out their own deck. So Bivouac hits 4-4 four, four here. I guess they can make it 5. So we're dead to another Lightning Helix. We've got the edge in this fight. And a Crucible will do it too. Alright, GG's. Close one here against the Red-White Planeswalkers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one, keep up cut down. Turn two, we could push something. Turn three, we have options. Bodyguard survives our removal here. So, sadly, this is a sorcery. So we'll have to take a hit. And Akumano is next. So, interesting. Soul Cauldron. Can maybe destroy it with the Brotherhood's end at some point. For now, we could play Preacher. Also don't mind Carnosaur to try and take out Bodyguard. Although I guess we have to be careful that 
Soul Cauldron doesn't uh, give it a plus one counter on response, since Carnosaur will be in the graveyard. So in that case, maybe just push Bodyguard, keep up cut down, or we could just play Preacher and just play Preacher, keep it simple. And then next turn we might be able to use two removal spells. Since whatever they play here will get a counter, so that might be a better target for our bigger removal. It's gonna be an ET with a counter. And a Stalwart. Okay. Opponent passes. So... Again, we could just play Shieldreds. And pass. If I tank with Preacher, we get a token, which isn't bad, but a Death Toucher on defense is also quite valuable. Now we do have to watch out for Bodyguard protecting Inti as a legendary creature. Wouldn't be surprised if our opponent's playing with uh, partners. Good synergy with Bodyguard protecting it. And they appear to be a pretty aggressive deck trying to beat down. If we can wait to cast the Carnosaur, that could also be good. Ooh, with Elder Dragon War, okay. Makes a dragon. And Hidatsugu was a perfect draw. So, could attack with Preacher first. While well, we get to both make a token and draw a card. Sure. And then Hidatsugu will gain another 6. We've got push-pull in hand already, so we're happy to trade this off. Although I guess Soul Cauldron might have something to say about it, since it can mess with our graveyard. Alright, we'll just keep two of them on top. Opponent's getting in there. Boseju discarded. And opponent found Thrill Seeker, so they're maybe trying to go big here and fling a large creature. So, set up some blocks. I guess we want to block Inti with Shieldreds. I wouldn't get any life from the token here, but that's okay. And then I don't have to block the dragon. Also with etching in play, if Hidatsugu dies it gets exiled, so it doesn't trigger, so we kind of want to deal with etching first. Opponent Sang's bodyguard protecting Inti. And then Soul Cauldron grows a dragon instead of etching. So we don't lose anything until the Elder Dragon War comes down. But now we actually get to trigger Hidatsugu. Dealing 8 damage. And then there's another push-pull on top. So we brainstorm, end of turn Hidatsugu gets sacrificed. And then we just deal another 8. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, Fine Hand. Got uh, Vampire into Vampire. Carnosaur has more removal if we need it. Facing what looks like a red-white Convoke deck. So keeping up Make Disappear for an early Gleeful Demolition is certainly reasonable, but uh, we'll have ample blockers between Harvester and Preacher. So we should be able to handle some 1-1s one and then maybe make disappear a Knight Errant they try to convoke. Thrian Portal on the red. And a Kumano, okay, so not quite what I was expecting. And there's a Gleeful Demolition. So next up, play Preacher. We'll hang back with the Harvester, I think. 
not trying to outrace the opponents. Another Thran portal is also going to cost them some life. And there's a Convoke Knight Errant. So couldn't keep a make disappear in time. But to go for the throat will still answer it. And then we can attack with Preacher, draw a card. Could also offer the trade, but uh, let's just go for the removal. Now, interestingly, if I pay a life to the Springs, we both get a token and draw a card. Which is maybe actually better here. Although it does mean potentially not drawing a card next turn. But getting a token now might be worth the pain. And then keep a blue mana for Make Disappear in case we draw a land. I guess her opponent also could have taken damage with Thrain Portal. But uh, yeah, it's not an intuitive play to make. So I want to hit my land drop so we'll use a blood token. And one push pull can go I think. Alright. So next turn we could deploy Shieldred, or we can uh, maybe use our cheaper spells. It's going to be Warden and a case of the Gateway Express. Nice answer to Preacher, perhaps. So that's very dead. Warden we can take out with push-pull, perhaps. And happy to make some trades. Case transforms. Now, maybe better off keeping up Make Disappear and Carnosaur to answer Warden. Yeah, could see that being slightly better than tapping out for Shieldred. And then I don't think we need to take out Warden right now. Since they're more likely to attack with it than tap multiple permanents to uh, scry. I guess on the flip side, if they convoked a Knight Errant, I might have been better off taking out Warden immediately. I'll go for it now. Epicure resolves. And a recruiter will counter for sure. Our opponent can attack, we can still trade. And then hopefully Shieldred can stabilize us. They can unearth the frontliner, so... The damage does add up. Probably dead to another recruiter. If this is giving them pause, they might have another case of the Gateway Express. But I can't really afford to just take eight either. And they probably would have gotten back Frontliner if they had case of the Gateway Express. Could be, I guess, an Igunjo. They still would have brought this back. So, yeah, I mean, I'm blocking. Get to untap. Missing double blue for Hidetsugu, unfortunately. But a uh, Harvester. Make a blood token. We could also draw to gain two. For now, could still be safer to just uh, take out the Epicure with push pull, even though we won't have it for Hidetsugu. Yeah, that seems fine. So seeing the flexibility here of our split card, also being a removal spell early. And then if I were to attack with Shieldred, opponent falls to 5. We can gain 2, so we're not very likely to die next turn. Unless they go end of turn reinforcements, which is somewhat likely to be their last card. Yeah, I'll just play it safe. Right, it was a Sokonzon, which is essentially the same as reinforcements here. So opponent falls to 5. 
gets back frontliner. And we're ready to block. Since we don't have double blue, we may as well use our blood token here. Opponent did draw a Ganjo after all. So that would finish off Shieldred. Now our opponent is down to two life from all those pain lands. Cut down the draw. Alright, I guess um, we could hang on to Blackleaf Cliffs to discard to another blood token in the future. Although if I draw another push-pull, having six mana could be worth it. We have two left in the deck. Carnosaur, another reason to play out my land. So I'll go for it. And then we can wait for Frontliner to attack to cut it down so they don't get to unearth it. They can use Battlefield Forge for colorless mana to sank the blood token. But opponent hangs back. Alright, so it's a bit of a staring contest. If our opponent can make some tokens end of turn, we could be dead. Knight Errants, yeah, that one was pretty awkward. Evangelists, uh oh. Opponent's down to one. Shieldred would do it. And a cut down instead. Okay, that keeps us alive. Cut down the Evangelist before it attacks. Opponent does get a bat token in return, so we could also cut down the bat itself. <laughs> now a recruiter. Yeah, that'll uh, do it, I'm afraid. Well, this was about as close as it gets. Opponent down to one. And uh, couldn't quite get there. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing red mana. Can we keep? Probably not. This time no blue, but we can cast a good chunk of our spells. So I'll keep. And then Hidatsugu is farthest from getting cast. Turn two Harvester, turn three we could uh, use Carnosaur against what could be a green-white enchantments deck. Nope, make that Abzan. Okay, so we just want to keep hitting our land drops pretty much. Might have to use a blood token to do so. Return from the wild, so our opponent's ramping. Okay, so... May not need Carnosaur right away. Although Brotherhood's End may also be kind of a dud. Yeah, I guess Brotherhood's End can go for now. A land is good. And another Harvester. So we still need an extra blue source to play Hidatsugu. So might once again sack a blood token. And then now maybe get rid of Carnosaur, keep Hidetsugu, and then push pull to maybe brainstorm on top of our deck. Preacher's not bad either. Can attack. Might see Wandering Emperor take care of a Harvester. March of Wretched Sorrow instead. So this strikes me as a uh, up the beanstalk kind of control deck with lots of X spells to draw. And uh, can expect some sweepers as well. So it's going to be a tough matchup. Hopefully we can pull off our uh, combo, no pun intended. 
If they exile Hidatsugu with the White March, they kind of get around the Death Trigger. So that would be a problem. And there's a White March on Preacher, so hopefully they don't have it for Hidatsugu. Sadly, our land enters tapped. Yeah, I mean, I could attack with the Restless Vents. Might be worth it. Discard one push-pull. Find another one. And then hope to resolve it. That's a good next turn. Seas can exile cards from our graveyard. That's too bad. They actually left Carnosaur, interestingly enough. So we can still maybe pull it back. And now a deadly cover-up. Maybe getting rid of all the Carnosaurs in the deck. It looks like it. Well, still have Hidatsugu and push pull, but no more Carnosaurs. And now our opponent knows what we're up to. Could see removal in response to the trigger. So we can't set up our top deck. And yeah, there's go for the throat. Still get a random reveal. And then find another Hidatsugu. So we probably want to hide that from a discard spell. Seems like that's uh, more likely than a shuffle effect. And then we'll have a push-pull on top of the deck in case they once again remove Hidatsugu at instant speed. Now their creature land could get busy, although we have a cut down at the ready. Why since Twilight for six instead? Alright, let's deal with one of the tokens. Try this again. And then push pull on top. Probably only need one. Could actually put both on top in case they try and kill Hidatsugu after our draw step. Sure. And then pass for now. Opponent goes all out. We cut down. And we block. And get to untap. So let's just pull Hidatsugu back from the graveyard alongside a Harvester. Lose one to the legendary rule. And that uh, will trigger Hidatsugu's ability. Which will deal a nice 8 damage. Get back Hidatsugu Harvester. So yeah, keeping double pull on top was pretty important for this combo to work. Trigger again. Three points at nine, and we get to attack for eleven damage. They can prevent a little bit with the uh, Restless Fortress here. So it's not quite lethal. But our opponent's gonna need a pretty miraculous top deck. I suppose if we had kept the reanimated Hidatsugu on the battlefield, it gets sacrifice end of turn, and we could have maybe closed out the game a turn sooner. But there's a lot that can go wrong if our opponent has relevant interaction, so I think it's still safer to just keep the original one. Three more poison, up to six. Another White Suns might do it. Depopulate is fine, as we'll draw the Gopher Throats and cut down to win the game. 
All right, so we got to see this Grixis Hidatsugu deck in action. And uh, yeah, overall I've been liking the flexibility of push-pull being an early removal spell as well as kind of a combo piece, even if it's not an instant kill like Explosive Singularity used to be, but uh, this is definitely kind of a more viable approach for the best of one ladder, where you can expect to face a lot of aggressive decks, and having early interaction is more important than potentially setting up a combo kill that's uh, probably not going to happen if you can't survive in the first place. So overall the deck felt kind of average, I don't think I would recommend it as your number one choice to play on the ladder since it's still gonna be too slow against aggro sometimes and control decks can certainly go over the top or exile Hidatsugu without ever triggering it so there are a few problems out there but uh, it's definitely a viable deck so if you enjoy Grix's midrange this is an interesting new twist on it so that'll do it for today's gameplay wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day